All right, folks, so for all of you out there with a Garmin Foreigner 945 LTE, this is your lucky day because get ready for one of the biggest software updates I've ever seen on a Garmin, where you're gonna be getting many of the features that come on the Foreigner 955, the Endura 2, and even the Edge 1040 bike computer. So when the 945 LTE came out, I think around 18 months or so ago, it was kind of strange that they still called it a 945 because it has a different case, it has a different heart rate sensor, and it has completely different internals inside. In my opinion, they should have called it something like the Foreigner 950-ish or something like that, and that holds even more true today because with this new update, you're going to be getting many of the features that come on the Foreigner 955. Now, this big feature update has been in beta for quite some time, so for those of you who have been participating in Garmin's beta program, you've probably already been trying out these features. It's just more that today, it's official and available for everyone, so be on the lookout for the software update. I think it's going to be like 7.07 .07 or later that'll have all the features that I'm talking about in this video. So first up on the list, we have HRV status as well as training ready and these were features that rolled out originally with the Foreigner 955 and then later on with the Enduro 2, Phoenix 7, as well as the Garmin Epix. And I'll actually be showing you these features on a 955 as well as the Enduro 2 because with training readiness, you have to be wearing your watch for at least three days. And then with HRV status, you need to be wearing your watch for at least three weeks. And I just haven't been wearing the 945 LT regularly. I've been using the Enduro 2. So with training readiness, what it gives you is a readiness score sort of thing based on multiple factors, including your last night's sleep, recovery time from previous workouts, HRV status, your acute workout load, sleep history, as well as stress history. And it basically wraps up all the information into one more easy to understand number, rather than relying on just one of those metrics in regards to how optimized you are for your next training session. And then with HRV status, this takes about three weeks to get your baseline. And then after that, it'll give your HRV status, the whether that's gonna be balanced or unbalanced. And again, that does tie into your training readiness. So next up is improved training status. So before training status was heavily dependent on your workout load and VO2 max estimation along with heat and altitude acclimation, but now it also factors in your HRV status into the equation. So now you may not see as many of those dreaded unproductive training statuses, even though you thought your last training session was in fact productive. Since it now also factors in HRV status, you now may see a training status like strained where your last workout may have been productive, but your recovery may not be as ideal. Oh, and really quick, if you're finding the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and just quickly hit that like button down below. It's a small little thing that you can do that will help this video and the channel quite a bit, and I appreciate it. And then another new feature to come with the latest 945 LTE update is Garmin's morning report. And what this does is that when you wake up, the morning report basically gives you a snapshot of your day, like your training readiness level, any planned workouts, last night's sleep quality, HRV, a weather report, any upcoming events for the day, as well as other bits of information you can choose like body battery, intensity minutes, and steps. There's also new and improved daily suggested workouts where this not only gives you suggested workouts for the day, but also the week or so ahead so you can kind of get an idea of your training schedule. And then they also have their new race widget and race calendar feature, and this also ties into the daily suggested workouts. So with the race widget and the race calendar feature, what you have to do to get this set up is basically just enter an event into Garmin Connect. So let's say I wanna race uh, DC Rainmaker on a 10K next week. So all I do here is just enter the name of the event, and then I can choose whether it's gonna be an in-person event or virtual. So just for giggles, let's say it's in person. Then I can choose what kind of activity it'll be, whether or not it's gonna be a race or just a regular old event. You can also then load in a course if you'd like, but you can also just do this later. And then you can choose a location. And this is actually pretty important when we look at the race widget here in a little bit. Then we have to choose a start time and there's no way either of us will be choosing to do a race at 8 a.m. So we'll pick a more appropriate time like 11 a.m. Next, we wanna enter in a distance for the event and then a few more things it may ask you for. And then there you go, there's your new race. And then back on your 945 LTE, after a sync, it just pops up on the race widget with a countdown to that race. And what's cool about this too is that this race will actually pop up on your morning report the day of the race. Now for how this ties into your daily suggested workouts, if we loop back to how those daily suggested workouts looked like before I entered the race, here's that schedule. But now if we fast forward to after I entered the race into my calendar, it actually adjusts all these suggested workouts based on that upcoming race. Pretty neat. And then for running specifically, they've also added native running power support with an accessory like an HRM Pro, HRM Pro Plus, or RD FootPod, and then wrist-based running power is coming a little bit later on down the road. And then you can also use your HRM Pro or HRM Pro Plus with your 945 LTE to get better estimations on indoor running pace and distance. 
Oh, and then you'll also get the new visual race predictor feature, which gives you more historical data based on previous training, which can help you figure out how your previous training and other variables could be factoring into your predicted race times. And then for all you cyclists out there, they also have their new cycling ability widget. And what this does is that it looks at your past training and basically gives you a sort of categorization into what kind of cyclist you may be. So for me, it has me as a climber, which I think is pretty appropriate, but you can have stuff like being a flat specialist or endurance specialist amongst others. And then for another cycling related feature, and this originally came out on the Edge 1040, is Power Guide. And what this feature does is that it can give you a power strategy for a particular route that you set up in Garmin Connect. So you first have to have a route created, but what you do from here is create a power guide strategy from that route. So it'll ask you for such things as your bike weight, the position that you'll be in, along with other factors, and then you can choose an average power target for that ride, and then it gives you an estimated completion time. And then when you go to use this on your 945 LTE, it'll give you power targets at particular points in your ride. Like if you're on a flat, you should try to maintain this power number, but if you're on a hill, it may suggest something different. And there's a host of other smaller updates too with this release, like fitness age. There's also new, more specific cycling activity profiles like cyclocross, gravel, and road, in addition to just biking and mountain biking. And then a bunch of others, which I'll just list on the screen right now if you want to pause. Now, even though the 945 LTE is getting a lot of the features that come with the 955, one notable feature that is not getting a SAT IQ, and the reason for this is that the 945 LTE, it doesn't have the dual band GNSS chipset that comes on the 955, which is what's needed for SAT IQ. But other than that, these are actually pretty comparable at this point. So I think this is a great move by Garmin to drop this slew of updates for all of you out there who took the plunge on the 945 LTE. It certainly is a unique device and maybe not named appropriately in the first place because it's definitely not just adding LTE to the original 945. This is totally new hardware. As we can tell now, this newer hardware can actually support some of these newer features. Anyhow, if you have any questions about anything I didn't cover in this video, make sure to leave those in the comment section down below. And on your way down there, if you found the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and also quickly hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more sports tech videos that are right around the corner. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.